Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack Intern. I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share some thoughts on the summer book by Tuve Janssen, which is a really wonderful book to read at any time of the year, but particularly at the start of summer. And we spend time in a series of wonderfully sketched vignettes across the summer with uh, two characters out on an island that's, that's way out in the Gulf of Finland. It's not the most remote island to access, but it's one of the most remote islands. And we, we spend our time with a grandmother and her roughly six-year-old granddaughter, Sophia. And the way that Janssen navigates between the two minds, between the two consciousnesses, is really wonderful. Um, and it's very effective. It's a book that Janssen wrote when she was 60. And so it has all of these ideas she wants to communicate. She, she can have certain perspectives in terms of her health uh, and in terms of her life that the grandmother has. Um, but she also grew up spending her summers on these islands. And so she draws on her memories of what it was like to be Sophia, to be out there and to, to be able to imagine, to get bored at times, to get frustrated or angry, to experience a storm. And she manages to portray each of these events from these dual perspectives. Uh, and, and she navigates very seamlessly and fluidly between the two um, perspectives, between the two minds, in a way that recalled uh, the, the way um, Virginia Woolf could weave streams of consciousness. Um, this isn't quite as modernist and, and in-depth as, as Mrs. Dalloway, but there's a, a deep uh, fluid current that runs between the two minds. And so she draws on that to write opening statements like this. It was an early, very warm morning in July, and it had rained during the night. The bare granite steamed, the moss and crevices were drenched with moisture, and all the colors everywhere had deepened. Below the veranda, the vegetation in the morning shade was like a rainforest of lush, evil leaves and flowers, which she had to be careful not to break as she searched. She held one hand in front of her mouth and was constantly afraid of losing her balance. And we don't quite know which, which character we're spending time with here. What are you doing? asked little Sophia. Nothing, her grandmother answered. That is to say, she added angrily, I'm looking for my false teeth. And so I, that, that opening there, I think, captures the sensibility that Janssen achieves across this book and across these many different vignettes, is this combination of how beautiful uh, the island is and, and how it just seems to be full of vitality, full of life. And then to put two characters in it, one of whom is just exploring and curious and trying to figure out what's going on. And another of whom is appreciating it and doesn't want to break all the flowers, but darn it, she needs to find those false teeth that she's lost. And the, 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 the combination between the two characters and the way that each of them will perceive a situation, uh, what happens when a stranger, you know, drops by to visit, uh, or to visit their father. What happens in the storm? What happens when they go and look and see worms and see what happens when uh, an angleworm gets cut and splits into two that both wiggle off? Uh, all of those ideas occur across this book and we really get to enjoy that uh, contrast and perspective. Um, but there's also that, as I mentioned, that, that depth of wisdom that occurs. And so we get uh, moments like this. A very long time ago, grandmother had wanted to tell about all the things they did, but no one had bothered to ask, and now she had lost the urge. And that, uh, that's been right in the middle of the book, and it's a, it comes at a moment where Sophia is asking her grandmother about things. And it's one of the rare moments where Janssen sort of pulls back the curtain to reveal a little bit about herself. Uh, throughout the book, there, there's not a huge sense of the deep autobiography of Janssen. We know that she spent time on these islands. It's very clear that she she's, she's, she evokes emotions and memories that, that she personally possesses, and there's a deep authenticity to that. But we don't know a lot about her life, and we don't learn a lot about, for example, the grandmother's life. We know that she has a, a child because she has a grandchild, but beyond that, we don't really know much else. And so this is one of the rare stories where Sophia finds out that you know, she wants to build a tent and she learns that her grandmother was one of the early sort of like scout leaders who would allow the girls to go camping and the girls to um, sleep. And so we have, uh, isn't it a scout tent? Asked Sophia anxiously. So her grandmother said maybe it was after all, but a very modern one. And they crawled in and lay down side by side. Now you're not allowed to go to sleep, Sophia said. You have to tell me what it was like to be a scout and all the things you did. A very long time ago, grandmother had wanted to tell about all the things they did, but no one had bothered to ask, and now she had lost the urge. We had campfires, she answered briefly, and suddenly she felt sad. 
And what else? There was a log that burned for a long time. We sat around the fire. It was cold out. We ate soup. That's strange, Grandmother thought. I can't describe things anymore. I can't find the words. Or maybe it's just that I'm not trying hard enough. It was such a long time ago. No one here was even born. And unless I tell it because I want to, it's as if it never happened. It gets closed off and then it's lost. She sat up and said, some days I can't remember very well, but sometime you ought to try and sleep in a tent all night. Uh, and, and that sort of conclusion, the way that the grandmother thinks through her memories, has this meditation on life, this, this idea that she possesses things that no one else can because she, those memories pre-exist all of these other people who are living on this tiny island with her. And that because they're hers, unless she shares them with somebody else, they will, they will, will be forgotten. And so Janssen um, really manages to, to evoke both sides of, of the young granddaughter and the grandmother across this book in, in a way that's really wonderful. I think Janssen was aware of her own um, aging, not just with her memory, but, but physically. And she has moments where the grandmother has the cane and can't quite climb up to somewhere that Sophia does, or it's a burden to get down and climb and crawl under uh, to look at flowers or to look at a small animal. Um, but there, there is also a real happiness and a peace that exists across the book. So it was one that I thoroughly enjoyed reading. I think what I'd like to do is take this and maybe next summer or maybe later this summer, we'll see, um, read it, read one vignette a night um, with my daughters. Because I think that that, that I think maybe uh, could evoke a, a different sort of experience with this book. But it, it really is a joy to read. And the other part that's really quite fun across it is that uh, throughout the book, there are the various illustrations that Janssen herself sketched. So these are quite fun as well. And I, the, the concept of, of sort of the, the young person and the, the older human and sort of their interactions reminded me a little bit of what Shakespeare goes for in The Tempest. Um, I was reminded as well of Anniversaries by Uwe Johnson, the great long book. This was a lot more fun to get into and spend time with. Um, I was reminded that the sense of whimsy that exists and the illustrations, I think, reminded me a lot of nature stories from Jules Renard, which I highly recommend. That the, the, those are almost companion volumes, and I'll link my video on that book in the description box. And then uh, I was reminded at times of Sketches from a Hunter's Notebook by Ivan Turgenev. There's a very different sensibility, but there is also this, this, this authenticity of getting out there, getting and spending time there in you know, in nature, um, just with people, but with a very small group of people and letting uh, characters just sort of feel, which I thought was really enjoyable. And I mentioned, of course, that uh, there's very few times where Janssen pulls back the curtain and lets us in. And that, that's very true across this book. Um, there's, there's no sense about Janssen's personal life beyond enjoying spending time on the island as a little girl that occurs across here. Um, even, you know, there, there's not a real clear sense of like, what did her parents do? What were her parents' jobs? You, you can't tell from reading this book. And you certainly um, as well can't tell uh, that Janssen was queer and that, you know, she and her, her partner would spend their summers out on this island as well. There's, there's no sense of, of the privacy of the, of the personal uh, uh, life that Janssen had. Um, but but it, it remains this book that crystallizes, you know, if she's not allowing us to see that, what she is allowing us to see is almost what she, she really wants. It's very intentional that she's allowing us to see this side of uh, her memories and this side of her life um, within the summer book. So it really is a book that, ha as beautiful as it is, it also has these subtle evasions uh, that, that allow it to, you know, retain some new quality. So I'd be curious to know if anybody has read her stories or any of her other works um, besides the Moomin cartoons. So hope everybody's doing well and that we all have a safe summer. Thanks.